Thank you to those who have tuned in to this video presentation on the Klamath Basin Integrated Fisheries Restoration and Monitoring Plan, or IFRMP. My name is Clint Alexander with ESSA Technologies based in Vancouver, British Columbia. The Klamath Basin IFRMP has been in development since 2016 and has been led by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission. The goal is to provide a unifying basin-wide framework for planning the coordinated restoration and recovery of 10 native fish species. The main goal of this short talk is to provide the audience with an overview of this collaborative effort with an emphasis on the prioritization component and how the prioritization approach and tool that's been developed will help enable ongoing adaptive management. What is the driving reason for embarking on a multi-year, multi-phase restoration plan for the Klamath Basin? Which, as you can see, for those who are unfamiliar with this area, spans Southern Oregon and Northern California. First, uh, several native fish species of the Klamath Basin are edging ever closer towards extinction. Populations which are of great cultural and economic significance to seven indigenous communities and other communities in the basin. The watersheds that native fish inhabit have experienced a considerable history of stress, including the factors listed on this slide. Climate change and more frequent and intense droughts and forest fires are not the least of these challenges in more recent years. And added to these challenges, the basin spans two states, as I mentioned, brings multiple overlapping agency and tribal jurisdictions uh, responsible for managing water and fish for many different competing interests. This has made basin-wide coordination elusive, a problem captured in a National Academy of Science review, two reviews, 2004 and 2008, which recommended undertaking a serious basin-wide effort to overcome the inefficient bits and pieces approach to restoration science and integrate individual and regional studies into a more coherent whole. The IFRMP's central question is, what habitat restoration actions will provide the broadest possible benefits to achieve basin-wide recovery for 10 native Klamath Basin fish species? And how do we iteratively update priorities through time for those restoration actions? In pictures, you can see the various focal species that uh, are of concern in this plan, which includes anadromous as well as resident fish distributed throughout the basin. While there have been many past and active restoration efforts in the Klamath, the IFRMP is the only plan that provides a consistent framework from which to prioritize, sequence, and choose restoration projects and monitor the results at the basin-wide scale. The framework emphasizes finding restoration projects that are likely to provide broad multi-species benefits, not just benefits for individual target species at uh, sub-basin or regional scales. In the background, the Klamath Basin, as some of you may know, is the subject of the largest dam removal project in U.S. history, should it be carried out as planned. And removal of four mainstem Klamath River dams would open up over 400 river miles of habitat to migratory salmon, trout, and eels for the first time in more than 90 years. And this includes helping reconnect access to cold water refugia, key to helping some of these species adapt and persist in the presence of ongoing climate change. While hugely significant, removal of dams, potentially as soon as 2023 or 2024, will not restore on their own a hydrogeomorphic and biogeochemical processes which drive channel conditions and ultimately habitat suitability for native fish species. This conceptual pyramid underpins the core restoration philosophy of the IFRMP, wherein a holistic process-based approach is taken to restoration at the basin-wide scale that seeks to address multiple root causes of ecosystem degradation by emphasizing restoration of ecological processes and functions rather than a narrower focus on the resulting symptoms. The IFRMP's process-based approach recognizes the inherent hierarchical nature of these processes. As shown in this conceptual pyramid, improvements in underlying hydrogeomorphic and biogeochemical processes near the bottom of the pyramid are expected to yield cascading benefits across more localized channel habitat and population processes uh, further up the pyramid. While I don't have time in 12 minutes to take you through our integrated framework components in any depth, we have mapped 
a lot of these key pieces in the IFRMP to this biophysical pyramid. For example, stressors, core performance indicators, and the primary effects of different classes of restoration actions are all intentionally linked to these biophysical tiers, which allows us to do things like weight some of the different factors differentially in our tools to influence things like priorities. Tribes, nonprofit organizations, private landowners, federal and state governments have worked very hard across the Klamath River Basin for more than 30 years and implemented hundreds of restoration projects to date. These efforts have not always yielded the results people have hoped for, and they have not always been well coordinated. And this is a big practical problem when there is a pressure to show results quickly and funding to do restoration and monitoring is of course limited. And so it's imperative to choose a wise sequence of restoration actions and strategically use funds. How do you do that? Well, to drive the point home of the importance of coordination, one can think of restoring a watershed like planning and hosting a big potluck dinner. Without a plan for the dinner, your guests will be working separately to prepare their own dishes. And you could that could mean everyone arrives with dessert or Brussels sprouts or you, know, you get the point. But a good host would have a plan so that everyone arrives to a balanced meal that everyone will enjoy. And so metaphorically, with a coordinated, consistent restoration plan and method for prioritizing, we hopefully will end up with a more balanced, quote, meal that has all the right kinds of dishes to meet our nutritional needs. And the 2020 focus of our work on the IFRMP was therefore all about how to prioritize and coordinate restoration throughout the basin. After careful consideration of alternatives, we adopted a multi-criteria scoring approach that has undergone multiple rounds of peer review by sub-basin working groups. This approach delivers a systematic, repeatable, and transparent method for ranking restoration actions throughout all sub-basins of the, of the Klamath. And as shown on this slide, the essence of this method is a scoring system based on asking and answering six key questions about any restoration project. Uh, each of the, the first five questions has an associated formal criterion attached. The first three questions are data-driven, science-driven, and questions uh, four and five are based on expert opinion, as is question six, largely an opinion values consideration. Time does not permit diving into the data and methods underlying the five criteria. However, the key thing to grasp today is that these criteria all generate standardized scores with each attribute open to being weighted. And we add the component scores together and generate an overall prioritization score for each restoration project. The biggest scores imply the most beneficial restoration projects for the threatened and endangered Klamath Basin fish populations. Having carefully selected prioritization criteria, we need to create a tool to bring all the pertinent information together in one place. And that place for us is the Klamath IFRMP prioritization tool that serves as the backbone to organize data sets needed to power criteria one through three and equally important support collaborative multi-stakeholder identification of restoration projects and elicit weighting factors that I mentioned a moment ago. The tool then takes care of calculating the multi-criteria net score for restoration projects for whom there's a vast number and this slide also includes a by the numbers summary of our virtual engagement and facilitation efforts in 2020. With my remaining time, I would like to quickly introduce you to the tool, which I hope might encourage you to take a look on your own. There is, as shown on this slide, a URL and public login that you could use to try the prioritization tool out on your own. After you've logged in to the prioritization tool, you'll see a welcome screen with uh, some background information, a series of tabs, tutorial scenarios, projects, map explorer. The tutorial tab is a great place to start to learn more about how to operate the tool as I am going to go extremely fast right now. The most important single component is the scenarios tab. When you pick a sub-basin and a scenario, which is the first thing you need to do, you will then see a series of cards. And these cards are the rank order prioritized restoration projects, in this case for the Scott sub-basin, that uh, according to the weighting factors and calculations through the prioritization equation lead to 
this list. And these numbers are the multi-criteria scores. And you are able to do things here, like learn more about these projects by expanding the cards, a rich set of information about the action types, the proposed location of the projects, stressors addressed, species that the project's targeting, and so on and so forth. But you can see also the, the subcomponents of the scores. And what um, happens as we go through time and different projects are added and removed, or people decide that certain criteria are more or less important to them than other criteria, these cards or projects dynamically resort. And that's essentially the one of the main values of this tool is looking at the sensitivity of these different weighting factors, seeing how things change depending on what is considered to be important in that place. And of course, users of this tool, when they're satisfied with uh, the different settings, can export the ranked lists of restoration projects to Excel. To wrap up, thanks to those of you who watched this video. I'd be remiss not to mention that over the past four years, we have created a number of other important products beyond the prioritization tool, and you can find those on the Klamath IFRMP project website at the URL shown. Further information, you can visit the IFRMP website or contact some of the key folks listed on this slide.